Good afternoon. <sighs> Welcome to my daily broadcast. Sorry, I'm signing for something that I feel I've got to talk about. Um, welcome to episode number 491, You're close to 500 now, um, in my daily talks, and I'll get into that in a second. And the topic today, by the way, is rising from the ashes like a phoenix, um, how pain can become a blessing. So before I get into that, let me, let me introduce myself and this um, array of talks, so you understand where I'm coming from. So my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out from the title on the broadcast. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I also help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what inspired these talks that I've done now for a year and 10 months, something like that. Um, this is a, th a series of talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is, or today's episode is number 491. And the topic today is, as I said, rising from the ashes, um, how pain can become a blessing and I'm going to speak about this in a couple of ways because frankly the news isn't pretty today um, for those of you who are watching the replay at some point later on this is done on a Friday afternoon after the um, what do they call that thing it was a push to vote for uh, Kavanaugh after the investigation with the FBI for the Supreme Court blah 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 blah, blah. that's that's the news um, vibration that's hitting a lot of people today He's not voted in yet, but he's dead, but it looks like he's coming closer and closer. So, I don't want to speak to that directly, because I like to do things indirectly. No, I'm speaking to something else, um, because some things came up today in conversation about abuse and um, sexual assault that does play into what happened today in the voting, but also, I believe, is part of life's challenges that some people face because of... Because of abuse, pretty simply. So, I want to speak to this from a slightly lighter version initially and get into the deeper part later on. So, bear with me as I go here. And I'm speaking about the idea, thematically, that the journey we face in life has challenges along the way. I mean, all of us do. And personally, for me, I've had a few challenges along the way. Thankfully, as I posted earlier today, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have any um, history in my own life of having been abused sexually or sexual assault and that sort of stuff. And I know for a man that's pretty likely that's that many men haven't had that. But I'm speaking from the point of view that I still have a great deal of compassion and love and support for my clients and for friends who've been through that because it just feels so uncomfortable inside of me. Like how could that, that, that nobody deserves that. So that's what's been stirring up for me. But I'll speak to it from a slightly higher level or a lighter level initially because As I said, it's just briefly said, we all have setbacks in life. That happens for most of us. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm reflecting on some things I heard yesterday that are a counterpoint to this. I'll say it this way. Life tends to throw us curveballs along the way. Some of them are smaller, some of them are larger, some of them are more painful, some of them are more drastic, some of them are actually not so bad. So there's a spectrum, put it that way. I said in a talk a while ago that was on a similar theme how I wouldn't have gotten to the United States if I hadn't had some setbacks along the way that seemed at the time to be a upsetting loss became a blessing in disguise. So I've seen that many times over. And right now, because I'm in the middle of finishing up the final edits on the book that I'm part of that's coming out next week uh, called Love Revolution, quick plug, that I'm actually uploading the files now for proofing online because we're that close. But that wouldn't have happened if we had given up after our um, <laughs> altercation, put it that way, with our with our, the publisher we hired, who was a real piece of work and who screwed us up big time. And yes, she's a woman, and I say I support women all the time, but some women I will support less than other women <laughs> because of the way they act and the way they do things. Um, but her publishing... Um, offering didn't deliver anything she promised. And it really was a challenge for us. But we're getting through that. And so basically the phoenix that came out of the ashes for us is we launched our own publishing company because we realized we can do it ourselves. So there's a blessing in that. Now, let's get into the deeper stuff, shall we? There are so many women I know, and some men, but particularly women I know, who have been through the experience of sexual abuse, sexual harassment, sexual assault, and have made something out of it that actually, frankly, blows me away. 
there are women I know who are incredibly fierce leaders of other women and I, I'm in great support and, and praise of them because they went through that trauma themselves and are really clear that any other woman who goes through that trauma, they want to help heal and grow because they've done the work to do that themselves. Which is why it seems so strange for me sometimes when people ask me like, well, what, are, what are my credentials as it were for doing this? Because I haven't been through the abuse, I've not been through those traumas. But I have been through enough experience of women who've been wounded emotionally that I felt this capacity to help, to support, to heal, to honor and to, and to guide them into their wholeness. That's been a way of life for me for years, way before I started coaching, which is why I'm so passionate about what I, what I do what I do. And, and maybe if you want to speak big picture stuff, as I was talking on, on a webinar yesterday, um, maybe the past life experience is one, because I know in past lives I have been a woman. Yes, I can say that on live stream audio, I have a past life experiences where I recognize that in that role I was a woman, and also someone as men. I've, I've actually remember, I, I'll side by for a second just to say, just to keep my manliness intact. I did spend one, one lifetime as a man, um, I was at the Battle of Hastings and I got killed in battle protecting the king who got, actually got killed later on. I was actually one of his guardians, uh, shield mates they call him back then. I took a spear through the chest defending him. So that was in 1066 because that was the Battle of Hastings. So I've had some past life experiences. <laughs> that may sound very like, he does what? But I have experiences where I've been a woman in past lives. I know that even if I don't have the direct experience of saying when it happened, who it was, but I have the feeling of that. So I know there's a, great, there's a part of me that feels that woundedness that women feel that I want to somehow um, help them heal. Because that wounding is something that is un, I don't say unnecessary, but it doesn't have to last your lifetime. And some of the things also, um, there's a, um, a book by Rachel and Naomi and Revan called, um, I think it's Kitchen Table Wisdom, I believe. Kitchen Table Wisdom, I think is the name of the book. And then she talks about these stories of these different, um, she, went through, she worked in, in a um, cancer rehabilitation um, and, and, and serious injury rehabilitation clinic in Colorado, I think. And she talks about how they had these stories about these different individuals who came through cancer healing, through losing a limb, other things that were pretty dramatic, and watched them rebuild their lives again. And one of the, one of the, um, students in one of the patients rather recovering in the hospital was a young guy who'd lost his legs in a motorcycle accident and basically they do art therapy with them and i'm and i'm paraphrasing I'm, I'm butchering the story because i'm not saying it clearly but bear with me so he was basically um assigned at the beginning because they will do art therapy to draw a or to paint a picture of how he sees himself and so the first time he went in, as he, as he came into this facility, he basically did a painting that showed this really um, misshapen, broken um, bowl, like a china bowl with cracks and holes and gaps in it all over the place. And through the journey, he actually became way more, um, excuse me, he lost one leg. I remember he was hopping. That was one of the things in the story. I remember the story about this. But he lost one leg. So during the journey, he became whole internally through the healing through the therapy through the counseling and became a mentor and a guide to other people who were going through their own traumas so he became a teacher in a way and at the end of his time at this facility of this i don't recall a hospital i think it was a, it was a nursing home it wasn't a nursing home either but rehabilitation it was a center for healing they call it that so on the last week they were giving him back the pictures he painted from early in the past when he was there and as they came back he saw the picture of the, the one he first did when he was there which is of the broken a bowl and he said hang a second this is not finished yet and he said what do you mean he said hang on a second so he grabbed some paints I guess they were in the art room to do this and he started painting on it and when he gave it back to them what you saw was all those cracks and holes in the in the bowl were painted bright yellow and bright white and there was light shining out of them and he said basically what he realized during the journey was that going through this process of when he lost his leg and came out the other side he realized that what happened was he became stronger at the broken places. That's actually one of her quotes, stronger at the broken places. And actually in, in Japan, if I remember correctly, there's a term called, I think it's Kinsa, Kinsatori or Kinsaka, Kinsa, or I'll mess it up, I'm going to butcher it up. If you look it up on the web, basically it's a picture of va, uh, bowls and vases that are cracked that have been filled with gold, um, gold metal. So same idea, that stronger at the broken places and more beautiful at the broken places. And that's part of the journey we go through when we go through our own traumas and wounds from when we're younger, is when we do get the help, the counsel, the guidance, the healing that we need, 
we can become stronger than we were before. So if you're someone who's been facing that um, history and you don't know what to do with it or you're feeling still wounded, first of all, there's hope. Secondly, there are tools, resources, coaches, counselors, therapists, guides to facilitate you, guide you, and help you heal those wounds you carry inside. Because this is the thing I want to say carefully because I don't want to upset a lot of people who know who are deep in this, this, this journey. Whatever happened to you in your past that was hurtful, abusive, painful, suffering, whatever it was. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. Nice to see you in my broadcast. Um, if you had those wounds in the past, sometimes it's easy to hold on to them so you keep blaming the person that hurt you and wounded you. And I understand that because some of those things are traumatic and they're horrendous and I definitely feel that desire to keep holding them accountable somehow energetically. But this is the thing. If they're not around anymore, because a lot of times it's somebody who's passed on or nowhere near your space, you're still carrying those wounds inside, holding a vendetta against somebody who's no longer there. And as I've said before in other talks, and I've used this phrase before, that's basically what is known as resentment. Because resenting the other person for what they did to you in the past. But the problem is the resentment's inside of you, not on them. And like, and the analogy, or sorry, the uh, metaphor, something for, for resentment, is it's the idea about as if you're taking poison, expecting the other person to die. So if you're still carrying these resentments against somebody else, judgments against somebody else for what they did to you 20, 30 years ago, and you don't want to let go of it, you're actually poisoning your own system for something they did. Now, wouldn't it be better to, wouldn't it be better revenge to live a life that's healthy and whole and complete? I hope you're saying yes. It's not about letting them off the hook. It's letting yourself off the hook. So I'll say this again. If you have wounds or traumas or painful memories from the past that are still blocking you from having you want in your life, get help. It's worth it for you. It's worth it for you to have those healings happen so that your light shines more brightly, those, those um, light shining through the cracks of the broken places. You can, you can absolutely deserve and, and, and honor yourself by having those healings. Because the stronger you are now and the more powerful you are now because of the journey you've been through, one, becomes a model for other people. Two, is the best revenge against those people who put you in the first place. Because you didn't, they did not deserve you being sick and suffering because of what they did, and far from it. They deserve to be shown that you don't, you're not a victim of them anymore. And that's the phoenix rising from the ashes. That's the possibility of having what you really want because you do not have to stay where you were. And whatever you came from, wherever you came from in your journey, your past, your upbringing, your childhood, those wounds are not permanent. You can actually transform that. Karina, sorry, saying it. Anger is a legitimate part of grief, though. Absolutely. One, one that has to be fully experienced and moved through before it's possible to heal fully. Karina, I would not disagree with you at all. Anger is part of that. It's part of the five, uh, um, not steps, but the five components of grief. And if you're going through grief, yes, expressing, allowing those five elements to unfold properly and healthily and naturally, because they will do their own thing, is absolutely right on. At the same time, if you're also clear that you've been holding on with anger and resentment for 25 years and you're not letting go of it, and basically what you're doing is you're just getting more and more stiff, rigid, and your teeth are getting broken from the from lockjaw. I mean, I'm being facetious, but truth is, many people carry that wound inside so tightly and actually killing themselves slowly but surely. So, yes, having the freedom from emotions to heal and release, I agree with you absolutely, Karina. At the same time, it's also worth looking at, can you do, can you take steps to heal that once and for all? Because anger is not a way of living your life. Anger is a legitimate part of grief, as you said. But if you're living life in an angry way, nobody gets to like, get close to you, and you don't get close to anybody else. So it's not the it's not the what I would say is the long term solution. So that's my my um, speech on that. <laughs> so yes, I definitely feel for people who've been through these wounds. I mean, some of my clients have too. And hearing their their stories, it, it almost breaks my heart to hear what they they put up with when they were three, four, five years old. And that, for me, is so is so um, heinous. And yes, I would love the people who per per perpetrated these crimes, these these acts, were f were formally punished and and pay the price. At the same time, it's not about that solution. The solution is helping you yourself. And what's going on right now with the media? As I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, there is so much upset coming up because of what's being done right in front of our noses by these. I'm going to be polite how I say this. 
these smirking men and some women who are more attached to their political careers than they are to justice we need some healing going on for ourselves first because our angry and vitriol at them ultimately doesn't actually do any good when we stand in our truth in our loving in our light in our power then we usurp this controlling over oligarchy maybe is the word I'm not sure it's the right word but probably is um, that we can actually use, we can actually overthrow it because the truth is that the that's the piece I've, t I've, I've read about a while ago about how we're through this journey going from one one um, cultural evolution to another one so what's happening is we're moving out of an old era or an old civilization and this is the death throes of it and what we're moving into is the compassionate society and the so society we've been in for the longest time has been combative and war-based and against this and I believe it's time that it dies and it's very clear now more than ever that's getting closer and closer and closer to happening so yes Karina anger can be used as a fuel to create change it can be a very really powerful driving force as long as it's used to constructively constructively create change because anger can be used constructively and destructively and destructive doesn't help anybody ultimately it may feel good at the time but afterwards there's gonna be regret and lots of broken pieces so anger used constructively versus destructively to create conscious change absolutely yes we're on the same page I know so finishing up my point that I think we we'll to get back to is yes we are moving from we are moving painfully from a combative society to a compassionate society and I hold hope that we'll see that compassionate society within a couple of months or a couple of years not not that far away because what's still happening right now is more and more of this partisan controlling separating distortion combative environment which I don't want to be part of and I know I know you don't either so it's not about revenge it's about superseding it's about coming up from the ashes about transforming what happened into vision into future into the light we truly want to have so I hope that makes some sense um, with that I feel a bit better at least let me voice that <laughs> so thank you for listening um, this is my Facebook live I do every day by the way and it does go onto YouTube and onto my podcast afterwards and I'll give you those links in a second before I do that though um, one quick plug <laughs> oh, green. my optimism is sweet yeah you think it's more like 30 40 years away I was hoping it might happen in my lifetime that's possibly in my lifetime I'm not saying we've gone that quickly but I definitely feel that we're moving faster now because the negativity is getting so thick that we're gonna be more called to step up so I hope it's gonna be quicker than 30 40 years it might be that long because sometimes things take time so yeah but <laughs> I'm glad you like my optimism thank you um, I'm actually kind of positive as well because I'm launching in, a, in about a week. I just did a webinar yesterday and I'm offering it to my email list tomorrow morning. Um, I'm launching a group, I hate to call it a program, but it's called Love 18. It happens to be in 2018, but it's not the number reason for it. It's 18 aspects of love that I'm teaching over the next four months in a group format. Maximum of 30 people. Um, it'll be done online and um, it be done online with web with uh, weekly video calls and also have um, assignments and it's going to go through a series of transformational experiences over 18 weeks hence love 18 which is four months if you want to find out more about that I do invite you to check it out It's for anybody who wants to grow and become more loving in their lives because it's truly how to take self-love into 18 more levels it's pretty powerful stuff um, if you go to my website which is my name barryselby.com and click on actually you can't look up here click on it it's not there yet you have to go to barryselby.com forward slash love18, which is 1-8. I'll put the link in the comments afterwards. Um, check it out if, you, if, it's, if it calls to you. Um, there's a special special early birth special till tonight at midnight. You can check it out. Um, if it doesn't, that's fine too. So where you can find me, these broadcasts. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned. Done. This is number 481. There's, more, there's plenty more out there. Um, no. For... No, it's not four, no, 489, excuse me, 491. I don't think I've got that far ahead. Anyway, I do this every day. I've done it for about a year and eight, nine months in a row, every day in a row. You can watch these on my business page in archive because I do put them there. My personal page has lots more stuff on it. So I put them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. I then put them onto my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to that. Um, the channel is Barry Selby, or the user is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine. At the same time, I put it into my podcast. Well, <laughs> not yet, but I'm getting better at putting it onto my podcast. So on iTunes, I have a podcast called Messages for the Masculine, where I have about 40 so far. 
not 400, so I'm way behind. But you can subscribe there and also download those broadcasts in audio format. So um, that's messages from the masculine as well. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me. I do these talks every day as best I can because sometimes it moves at 5 p.m. Pacific time, this channel. Um, if you want to watch tomorrow, I should be on at the same time. And I appreciate you being with me. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your input. I appreciate that, Karina. And uh, if you're just getting here, please watch the replay. And any questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond after I sign off. Thanks for being, me, being with me as always. And I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Bye.